Hi, this is Pat Moorhead and the 6.5 is live and on the road at MongoDB local here in New York City. And as you can hear from this background, I mean, we're right on the show floor. It's exciting, big announcements, big conversation, but I'm here with my bestie, Daniel Newman. So it's a good day. Yeah, uh, what's this? One of 30 yes. events, MongoDB local. Uh, instead of taking that big, we're gonna do one massive event. It's, we're gonna take the event to you. It's, yeah kind of a cool different approach on events and thankfully for you and I we don't have to do all 30. Not that I, <laughs> exactly. not that I wouldn't mind getting to some of those locations but we are a bit of uh, you know we do travel a decent bit but the energy here is really good and the topic in focus has been a lot about AI and I think we're going to talk about that here once again. It is and the great part is we also research Cisco a lot and we've been researching the company for over a decade but uh gentlemen thanks for coming on the show thank you for dave inviting great us. to see you yatish thank you for coming on the show glad to be here yeah yeah so dave let's start with you sure. um we're here at mongodb uh but cisco has to have aiml on its mind and of course recently at cisco live Yes. Uh, you know, we heard from Chuck Robbins and we heard from a number of your peers and executives talking a lot about it. But I'd love to kind of just get your overall take, you know, on kind of what are the exciting, the important uh, opportunities that you're focused on as, you know, as one of the leaders in the AIML part of Cisco's business sure. uh, for Cisco itself. Yeah, sure. So let me actually break it down. And you're right. AIML is a hot topic right now. And that is actually amplified by generative AI a lot, which has been out there for a while, but now suddenly it's come to prominence. Exactly. Um, so there is a lot of work that's happening at Cisco, some of which you probably already covered in Cisco Live. There is a lot of work happening in our area as well. Cisco has its own business entities and a centralized group that runs AIML. So uh, if I break it down into initially into security and productivity, and uh, then uh, uh, some around internal. The way I look at it is security. You guys probably looked at it a lot on Cisco Live. There is a lot of initiatives around intrusion detection, mo monitoring detection, as well as corrective actions. There are companies that Cisco also partners because as you guys are probably aware, there's a lot of open source development that happens. And sometimes open source also leads to code vulnerabilities. So, there are companies that we partner with that test out on those codes so that the code that is deployed is also secure. So that's what we call as preventative mechanisms that are in place. So that's a whole lot on security side. On productivity side as well, uh, you probably know the full stack observability where Cisco Absolutely. tries to optimize nodes uh, for data transfer. You also probably know around um, uh, the work that we do in Collab around speech to text, uh, around translation. Similar to that on open source, uh, Cisco also partners with companies around improving the code quality itself so that whatever is deployed is actually robust enough. Uh, not to mention, we also have a lot of investment in generative AI, especially as we guide our technical support engineers for our product specific information and product specific guidance. Uh, that's all on the external side, but we apply a lot of, because Cisco is a B2B company, we apply a lot of AI ML on internal side as well, right from identifying data patterns and data observability all the way to uh, predicting and targeting the right customers for conversion. And we also partner with customers actually to make sure that they make better use of our products for the price that they're already paying. So a lot of exciting things happening across the entire Cisco organization, across engineering, across commercial. Yeah. I'm by the way, I love consistency because if I had to play back before an interview, I would have said, hey, these are the three areas that we wrote about uh, in terms of Cisco Live uh, and AI. And I'm just, you know, I don't think you need to be a futurist to, to, to see where this is going. I mean, on, on the security part, it's definitely it's going to be this AI versus AI, yeah. spy versus spy. Uh, I am super excited about the future of collaboration. Specifically, though, in the call center and yeah. how that can transform uh, that experience. So, Yatish, you know, it's easy for us to get up as pundits. You know, Dan and I talk about all these great futuristic things that could happen and maybe should happen. It plays a plays a part in the industry. You actually have to build these things. And I'm curious, when it comes to kind of scalability and unique requirements 
for AI, ML, related to what you do. Can, can you talk a little bit about that? What, what are some of those? Sure. So in the secure firewall side, my team is responsible for threat intelligence ingestion and uh, making it actionable on the product. So we deal with on-prem hardware devices. We develop for the cloud as well. And uh, it's a challenge, right? It's tough to scale, not only on on-prem, but also on the cloud. So sometimes, uh, you know, you're thinking about scaling vertically by adding more resources, make the system beefier. In other cases, you're like, okay, we need to process a whole lot more data, right? So should we process in parallel? What are the costs? What are the challenges to do that? So it becomes more of a, you know, you try to lean on the process and define it so that you have the clear requirements as to what are you trying to build? What's the data that you're trying to ingest? And make sure that, you know, you try to meet some kind of benchmark that's set for you, right? So if you can meet that benchmark and make sure your entire team is on board with the design, the architecture, and make sure that, you know, how do you make sure things are scalable? You test them. So you need that automated CI CD pipeline in place where, you know, you make a change, you can test it right away and see how did that one change affect my entire system? And that, that's where through continuous iterative uh, testing and improvements, you can keep uh, you know, making your systems faster, more scalable, more efficient, yes. and uh, you know, handle change because that's the only thing that's constant in this world. Yeah. So Dave, leading AIML products for all of Cisco, I imagine you have a stack, I would say a paper, but I hope it's not, but your inbox is probably pretty full. Uh, I guess your WebEx has quite a few requests coming in. All of what's possible, all of the product that can be built on top of observability, product can be built on top of collaboration. You've got intent-based networking. You've got security as a booming business. You know, how are you sort of dealing with prioritization? Because no matter how big a company you are, you, you still can't do it all at one time. And I'm guessing all the business units feel that they're priority projects are the most important and you know so how are you juggling this with uh you know balancing the the, the product with the equal importance yeah so i mean uh, one thing is uh, our group primarily focuses on customer experience there are different groups that actually manage ai ml products for different business entities so we are more on the customer experience and renewals so yes we have enough demand i would say but at the same time one thing that I learned is, I mean, there are grounds for experimentation. Uh, generally, we have certain criteria that we follow around, uh, it's not just a classic two by two of impact versus ease of use. There are other things that we also look at. One is the end goal is always, how do I make sure that I have a full stack digital product? It's not just about AIML. It's about AIML embedded into a product and a product embedded into a business process. So that's the ultimate goal. And then if we work our way back from that last mile, we make sure that whatever program we choose or whatever product we choose, and we don't succeed every time, but when we do, we make sure that uh, there is enough support from the senior management. There is enough adoption from the middle management and the last mile. That's on one side from usability. From a technical perspective, it is a scalable solution that we can actually scale to a full stack and actually deploy into the field. Those are the two major aspects that we look at. And of course, we have to have the right resources and capability. That goes without saying. Uh, so it starts with impact, it starts with experimentation, but we rigidly follow those criteria. Otherwise, the risk that we see in AI ML is, it's a, it can become a cottage industry of algorithms. For both of you, I mean, I have the utmost respect for anybody who runs products. Yeah. Uh, I did this kind of mid-career, and it was the toughest job that I had. You know, I manage engineering teams, you know, P&L, also the business. It was tough. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, Satish, you have all of these uh, different people wanting different things, right? Uh, and then you have different time scales, and then you have different quality levels, right? That you can move knobs back, back and forth. Uh, you have real time customer feedback. Like, hey, I need this changed, but you can't have this constant and perpetual, you have to lock in on a roadmap, right? How do you manage all those competing uh, priorities? And I don't know if you would call that uh, product development approach 
maybe a product management strategy. I don't know, but how, how do you handle that? That's a good question. <laughs> You're like, welcome back to my life here. I know, so I talk with customers a lot, right? right. So frankly, at this point, I love customer requests because they're the guys who are actually using the product, right? right. So they find ways to break stuff that you never thought of during design and dev. And you're like, how did this happen? Right. So it's always a challenge when you work your way backwards. And the main question that uh, you know comes to my head is, why? How did you break it? And how can we help you? Yes. Because if you can answer that question, some of those requests are really simple, right? You can be like, hey, I can do this in one day. So let's just do it right away yes. and we're done. Some are like more complex requests and more effort and planning. And then you're like, okay, does it fit in our roadmap? If it does, maybe we can get it out in the next release, yes. for example. And sometimes you do have to say no, because there are some requests that just, you know, would adversely impact other customers and they don't really fit with what you're trying to build and develop. So saying no is tough, but I've had to do it on multiple calls. But having said that, Having customer requests is a good thing because that's the way you get, sometimes you get new ideas too, for example, because they have new use cases that you never thought of. And you're like, wow, hey, this is something good. And you know, the roadmap has to be flexible, right? So you have to be flexible and adapt. And if you can do that, that's the way you also innovate and keep customers happy. No can be powerful. And we know that, whether it's leading people, raising your children, you gotta learn to put no to use frequently. Yeah. You don't do it often. It's easy You're to say nice. yes to everything. It's, the hard part is to say no. It's hard, but yeah. it's not always right. You know, Steve Jobs was kind of infamous though for saying, yeah, thank you customer, but I'm still going to do it this way. So it's always that kind of in between because you have a lot of innate knowledge when you're running product about yes. what it can and can't do. Customers want everything. And of course, every customer thinks their thing is the most important right. thing as finding that balance, which is an everyday task for both of you. We've got to close up here. I want to thank you both very much for joining us here on the 6.5. Hope to have you guys back again on uh, the show sometime soon. Sure. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Thank Thanks you. for inviting us. Thank you. All right, everyone. Here we are at MongoDB Local, New York City 2023. This is the 6.5 on the road. Hit that subscribe button. Tune into all the episodes. We had eight of them here. And we hope you join us for those and for all the other 6.5 shows. For Patrick, for myself, time to say goodbye. Stay tuned with us. See you soon.